Heaven and Hell by Swedenberg. It's a thick one, and I've just read Heaven, but I want to show you some highlights. First off, they mentioned Swedenberg. He had dealt with an interesting subject in a cold, bloodless, pedantic matter, full of reason but lacking the fire of feeling and the contagious power of enthusiasm. Well, I think it's because what he was actually presenting, it already implied emotional affectation. I mean, if you just take what he's saying as true, it's a given that you're going to have an emotional reaction, so why should he be all emo about it? With angels, there's a surrounding aura of spiritual life that emanate from every angel and from every spirit and envelop them. By means of these auras, one can recognize, even from a distance, the quality of affection of their loves. These also determine geographical regions whose boundaries are not drawn the way they are in the physical world, but depend on which way people are facing. Observer effect, anyone? Okay, if we are good, we look like handsome individuals. Hmm. Intention is an act of its own. That's another good quote. Whenever people move from one place to another, they get there more quickly if they are eager to, and more slowly if they are not. The path itself is lengthened or shortened depending on their desire, even though it's the same path. I have often seen this, much to my surprise. So yeah, in the spiritual world, all union depends on the way people are facing. It's worth noting that many of them can talk with one of us at the same time, and that person with them. So, uh, multitasking sounds fun. This is a very Nietzschean quote. The heaven in one individual is not the same as the heaven in another. This is where things get interesting. The innocence of wisdom is real innocence, because it is eternal, being a property of the mind itself and therefore our volition itself and our consequent understanding. That's why they say in heaven that innocence dwells in wisdom, and why angels have as much wisdom as they do innocence. They appear extraordinarily simple in outward form, but they are wise and provident inwardly. Real innocence is wisdom, because to the extent that we are wise, we want to be led by the Lord. Instead of Lord, we should just use guy in mind, I guess. But, I got another book for you. Conversations with Angels. This one's a little smaller, kind of a summary. Now all that quantum non-locality stuff, and that what the bleep uh, section, completely corresponds to Swedenberg. People need to know that in the spiritual world, feelings are communal rather than individual, since people are spirits at that point, and feelings constitute a spirit's life. Their thoughts originate in and are driven by their feelings. Objectivity means lack of breath. Um, and here's uh, Emerson. A perpetual breeze breathes on those who have love and wisdom together in equal amounts. Now, this is... I read this after I'd already felt these connections to matter. And, you know, metaphysics is not really meta anymore. And supernatural, extraterrestrial, extraordinary, it's not extra or super. We've just lost the source. And I was watching this Joe Rogan interview, and uh, when he used DMT, he actually reached that part of heaven that we might go to in the afterlife, that DMT is a preview of the afterlife. He thinks that world is just, it's already been there the whole time, and that there is some sort of unconscious world that we have to make conscious. Like, the whole goal of it was to make that unconscious conscious. Now, did God give balls to everyone? No. So, God didn't give the need to explore to everyone either, so I guess evolution doesn't require that everyone um, attain these states, but it sure as hell meant for some of us. If we're supposed to make the unconscious conscious, then you know, why be in this physical world whatsoever? I mean, that's a big dichotomy. If there's a heaven, why even have an earth?